Hello. In this demo, um, I'll try to show you how we can uh, implement simple scripts with Bash. Basically, this is a tutorial which uh, is addressed to uh, my students uh, who are learning um, the beginning of uh, how to write Bash scripts. But nevertheless, um, you can watch it uh, even if uh, you are a master with shell scripting. So, what I'm going to show you here, um, first of all, you see this is, uh, I'm recording on my, on my Mac. Um, I'm running with Parallels, a virtual machine of Linux Mint. So, I'm connect, connected to the virtual machine using a terminal. Uh, although I can easily use the UI of the virtual machine, the idea is just to uh, develop the script remotely. So I'm started, I started the SSH, um, the daemon uh, which allows me to connect remotely uh, with the terminal. And uh, uh, I'm connected uh, from the host, the Mac machine, to, to the Linux uh, virtual machine. So if, uh, for instance, I display uh, the information about the, the operating system. You see it's uh, an, Ubuntu, an Ubuntu, but if I then start um, a terminal on the local machine and run the same command, you see this is a Darwin, which it's my Mac. So let's uh, continue with, uh, with the, the remote machine. What I'm, I like to show you it's a simple script which demonstrates how we can uh, uh, combine commands and write simple scripts. Let's suppose we want to display, first of all, the list of processes. So if I then uh, choose to, to output the processes for all the users and all the processes, regardless or not, they have a, te a terminal connection which started them. But then I, uh, with uh, O option, I can select what information to display, like the command and the process ID. So what I'd like to, to show you would be the following script. Let's suppose we want to implement a script that will receive only one argument. And the argument should be the name of a process. Let's say like uh, bash or some command. So first of all, we'd like to see all the processes which are running this command, this program, and for each process to display the memory map. If I take, for instance, and run the process map command with the ID of the current, come on, with the, uh, the ID of the current process, so I run the process map with uh, dollar dollar, the, the dollar uh, variable is the, the ID of the current process. I see that the current process is loading some binaries from bash because it's running bash. Uh, this is the location in memory which uh, the block are loaded. These are the, this is the size of the block of data. These are the permissions of the process on that. So what I like to see would be given a program, find all the processes running this program and then display the information about the process map and sum up the total amount of memory which is loaded with binaries that are shared by the system. So I would like to see all the entries which ends in .so, which is the equivalent on a Unix world of DLLs from Windows. And I like to see, uh, so the script will receive an argument the argument will be a name of a program. I like to see all the processes running that program. And then for each process, sum up all the memory which is used to load binaries from system files, from system libraries. So we'll start by creating an empty directory. Let's just call it TMP. And then go to that, to that folder. Now let's just create a file and I will call this uh, file smm.sh. I need to change the permission so that I allow anyone to execute my script. And then I will edit this in a convenient way with midnight commander. In midnight commander, I then press F4 to edit this as you may see 
with the commands that uh, were available were displayed here. So, first of all, I like to say that this should be executed with born shell because it's going to be written in in the syntax of born shell. That's a special command telling the script to be executed with this interpreter, and this is the the absolute path to the interpreter. Now I need to check, and only if I have one parameter, then I I will execute my logic. So if it's actually evaluating the exit code of a program, and in my case, I'm going to execute, I'm going to test the logical condition. So each time you execute such test, you then test it with the test command. I like to check that the, the, the number of arguments that my script receives is equals to one. And you may see here, I will respect the syntax of the if without um, writing with the colon and putting this on the same line as we used to do as developers. But let me just use the bare syntax of uh, the, the alternate statement. So I compare with a numeric relational operator, which uh, will try to make to convert to a number the arguments. So I say that the number of arguments, which is uh, represented by the, valor, by the variable hash, should be equal to 1. If I, I have one arg argument, then I will proceed. But otherwise, I need to tell the user how to actually call the script. So I'm going to say usage and $0 is the name of the script. And then I just put a dummy text so the user will know it has to provide the command. Now, because in this case, the script won't terminate normally, I will then return an exception, like I will uh, exit with a non-zero uh, return value setting, saying that, uh, you know what, that was a problem. Now, what I need to do? First of all, I need to call the process, uh, uh, process <coughs> the PS to, to list all the processes. Um, and then I need processes for all users, regardless or not if they have a command or uh, they were launched by a terminal connection. I then select what columns I like to see, so I need the command and the process ID. But if I, I then execute this, uh, let me just close this a bit. Um, I forgot that I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm in the Linux machine and I was using the command instead of control key. Now, uh, if I then execute the process state again, and then output the command and the process ID. You may see this has a variable number of spaces between the two columns. So what I like to achieve would be to execute the translate command and suppress the unnecessary spaces. So now I can split by space and have two columns. Now, coming back to this one, I need to execute the translate suppress the uh, excessive spaces and then continue reading the line. I like to read each line at a time, so I will do something like as long as I'm able to read a line with the read command, then I will execute the following statement. What I need to do would be to check what is the name of the command. So let's define a variable and do the substitution to echo the line that I read and then um, redirect it to the cut command to cut by the delimiter space and take the first field. If the command is equal to the first argument, which is $1, and as you may see, I'm using the equal sign and not the comparison operator like so because this one is going to try to convert to a number and here it's not a number. So if I found the command I'm interested in, that means that the current process is running the command. Now what I need to, to do would be execute call the process map with the process ID, but then just let's just take the process ID first. 
come on, let's define the variable called process ID. So in the same way, <coughs> I'm going to echo the line that I read, send it to the cut command, split by the delimiter space, and take the second field. Now I can call the process map with the process ID, and then execute the translate again to suppress the additional spaces, and this time read also in a variable called entry the line. Now, I need a statement to check if the line ends with dot so. So I can do this with case, and in this case, if my entry is in the following template, like ends with dot so, then I will that that this means that uh, <coughs> this is actually um, I was missing a quote here. Yeah, so that means that uh, my line is something I'm interested in. Let's just compute the size of the entry. So uh, as you may see, if I then execute the process map again, let's just execute the process map with the current uh, the current uh, process ID, suppress the additional spaces, and then just take uh, um, the first 10 and then from this take the first the, the last five. <coughs> so as you may see <coughs> sorry for my voice. The information I need is in the second column. So in here I will uh, okay I can just filter this first. Um, I can cut by the delimiter space take the second field. And then I need to get rid of the um, suffix for kilobytes. So I can then do the following. And this will be the information I'm looking for. So in order to compute the size, echo the entry, send it to the cut command to cut by the delimiter space, take the second field, then send to the cut command again split it by k and take the first field. Now I need to sum up this with a total variable. Let's define the total in here equals to zero. And let's just add this to the total amount of kilobytes, which means that I need to perform the expression statement to add the total with the size. Come on. Now, in the end, I will display this information and I like to display the total in kilobytes. But if I do like so, it's going to try to output the content of the variable called total k. I can easily uh, separate this by a space, but in case I want to have it like so, I can use a cum, uh, curly braces here, which will tell the interpreter to replace the variable called total and not total k. Now, with this having implemented, let's, let's, let's then uh, go and execute it. If I try to call my so.mem.sh like so, you see that it says the command was not found, but if I display uh, the content of the folder, you see that it's there. Why is that? Because when uh, I'm trying to launch uh, a program by uh, its short name, the interpreter is looking with the uh, is, is looking to find it uh, with the pet variable. So this contains a li list of folders separated by column. And in case I have uh, uh, no, uh, in case the current folder the dot is not in the list, it's it won't try to find it in the current folder. So I need to actually call it uh, with respect to, so this one went to sleep, nevertheless. Um, so if I call like so, it's going to say, you know what, uh, you need to call um, 
with an argument. So if I check what was the exit code, it's one and it's, it's, it won't finish the key. Now, if I execute this with bash, for instance, it says that <laughs> I have a typo. Sorry for that. Let me just try to see what was the problem. And I have in here an H, ho, not an echo. Come on, once again. Let me just clear this mess for you. So it says zero kilobytes. Come on. We were doing the right thing, but why it says it's, uh, zero? If, for instance, I will output the value of the total variable here. Uh, come on, should just be the total. Come on. Total, yeah. Uh, if I then output the, the total value here, you will see it's nothing wrong with our logic. So basically, let me just execute this again for you. Uh, it keeps changing, but in the end it's still zero. The reason it hap it's, it's happening like so, and I like you to, be a, to pay attention at this point, is because actually what's happening, each time we execute some logics, inside uh, a pipe like the one you see here the way the interpreter executes this is with a subshell so this while here <clears throat> because it's part of a pipe it's going to be executed as a subshell the subshell will receive a copy of the context variable variables so instead of working with a total it's going to receive a map containing as keys the name of the variables with the appropriate value for each variable. So instead of modifying the global variable here, when we change this, we will change a copy. And not it's not just a one level copy, but it's a second level copy because uh, this while receives a copy of the total, but it's, this one is receiving a copy of the copy. So there is no way on earth with this approach that we will be able to change the total and be able to see the change here. So one option to address this will be the following. Since this one is actually changing the total, let, let me actually output the value which is computed by this. <coughs> so in the end, we will echo what is the total but in order to make this to be the copy that is used by while we will group the while statement with the echo so now the pipe gets executed like so process map displays the information it is filtered and replaced by the translate and it goes to a compound command and this compound command is going to consume it with the while and in the end it's going to output the content of the variable. Because this is one command, it will have this total here will be the copy modified by read. But then I need to actually take the value and modify the total. So I call substitution so that my total will be changed this time with the value computed by, uh, by the statement here. In the end, I need to output what is the total. So <coughs> what I will do, and I have to be very careful with this, uh, would be regardless. Uh, so I will then modify the total. But in here, after completing the, the statement, I'm going to output what is the value of the total. Make sure it's outputting the same copy, which is modified by the while. And then make sure that I take the value total with the substitution here. And if I do so, of course, I, I, I don't have to take the value and modify the total. I can uh, just make sure that the copy that's modified by the while, like so, it's uh, displayed here. But in case I will need the total somewhere else and not just be dis displayed as it is with my script, I can make sure that I, I 
take outside the value of the total and set it in the, the appropriate variable. Now, if I do this like so and clear the output and execute this again, you will see that now I have the correct amount, which is the total amount of, in kilobytes of the memory that's loaded by all running processes that are running the same command given as argument. Uh, this is the amount of memory loaded with information from the uh, operating system binary files, shared binary files. So what I'd like you to pay attention with this is the following. Each time when you execute some logics as part of, as a segment of a pipe, make sure that um, this, because this gets executed as, in a subshell, it will receive a copy of the context variables. Each modification, each change that you do to that variables won't be visible on the global variables. Therefore, you need to do some, um, let's say, mumbo jumping, I was about to say, but you need to do some, uh, to be very careful how you um, take the information and modify the up lev upper level variables. Like, for instance, if you have only one scalar value or an array, you can output its value and make sure that the value you are outputting is the same that was modified by the segment. So the pipe should be executed like so. Send all the information to a compound command, which in the end is going to be in the end is going to be outputting the value. The value. Then you you store the value in your upper level variable, and in case this is in, inside another segment in a pipe, then make sure you output its value twice, and so on. So in the end, with this approach, you will be able to uh, store, uh, to, to actually propagate the change from within the place it happens to uh, the, the upper level. However, you should pay attention that in this way, you lose the ability to debug with echo. So there is no way on earth, if you need to, let's say, display some uh, tracing information which will help you identify by which path the program goes, uh, you will not be able to, you, you will lose this ability because the only thing that should be outputted by the statement should be the result of the variable and no other information. Otherwise, you will need to get rid of the trace, tracing information and only take the value of the variable, which is not, a, it's, it's a non-trivial task. So that's all. Thanks for watching.